Hey, Yitzi, do you have a few minutes to talk? Sure, two of you. Great, let's talk Parsha. So in this week's Parsha, we find the famous story of Balak that calls over Bilam to come and help him defeat Am Yisrael by the actual power that Am Yisrael always uses, the power of davening, the power of tefillah, the power of the mouth. He wanted Bilam to use it for his benefit in order to defeat Am Yisrael. Interesting though that we actually met Balak and Bilam already at the end of last week's Parsha with kind of weird sukkim that got thrown into the end of Parsha Chukat of Kenya Muah Mushrim, where Rashi tells us a story of how Bilak was defeated because of Bilam. Sichon hired Bilam to curse Balak and Balak lost that battle over there and now Balak tries to use the same strategy by hiring Bilam in order to defeat Am Yisrael. But if you take a close look at the first show, within this big story of Balak and Bilam and the cursing which turns into blessing, there's a story that doesn't seem like it's really part of the flow, really part of the storyline, which is the story with the donkey when Bilam goes to Balak after Balak calls him over. By a very simple look at the story, it's clear that it's there to tell us something. The funny thing is, with Bilam himself being the tale teller, the fable teller, the story teller, he can't himself see that it's enticing situation with the donkey is actually there to tell him something. What's interesting actually with the donkey, he described Bilam as a man with the power of words, but he describes himself often throughout the parasha as a person with the ability to see. He says, open eyes, it's shtum ha'ayin, someone with the open eye, can see the visions of God, and he doesn't see as you're saying, you know, what's going on here. But I think maybe that's exactly what that story is coming to tell us, because if you follow the story Basically, the donkey sees what Bilam doesn't see. Bilam, who sees himself as the seer, doesn't see the malach in the way where the simple donkey does. And only at a certain point does God open up Bilam's eyes and he finally sees what's been standing there in front of him. And maybe if you go back in the story, see the flow from the beginning, you realize what message, which he may not pick up, but what message HaKadosh Baruch Hu is trying to give him here. You know, the story starts with they come and ask him, can you curse Am Yisrael? And he he says, you know, it's, it's up to God. I'll wait and hear what God wants. And he sees, okay, listening to God, whatever God will tell him, that's what he's going to do. But then God tells him not to go. And then when they come again and ask again, still asks God again. And this time, for some reason, God says yes. But then when he starts going, God's angry that he's going. I don't understand. God said he couldn't go. Why is he angry? And then comes the story of the donkey. Maybe in a way, what Hashem is trying to tell him is, you see yourself as someone who is more complex than anybody else, who can see more than anybody else. But maybe because of your complexity, you can't see the simple things that even a donkey can see. And what is that? I told you not to go. Forget God told you no. You see God takes the nation out of Egypt, takes them through the desert 40 years. You really think that what God wants now is to curse them? You know, maybe this connects to what the Mishnah and Avot says. The Mishnah and Avot describes the Talmidim, the students of Avram Avinu versus the students of Bila. And it says the students of Bila, one of the things it says about them is they have Ain Ra'a. They have an evil eye. Maybe it's saying, hey, you do have an eye. You have the ability to see. But Ayn Ra is someone who sees himself in the center and therefore everything he looks at, everyone's success, everything happening outside of him, he sees in a bad way, in a negative way. That's your problem, Mila. You see the world, you see other people don't see, but you don't see the simple things that are standing right in front of your face. And maybe, maybe this is exactly the point that Bilam says in the bracha, in one of the brachot to Am Yisrael, Ki lo nachash biyakov velo kesem biyisrael. We know from Dvarim that menachesh and kosem are fortune tellers, are people who tell you about what's going to happen in the future. And the Torah says that we're not allowed to go to Menachim and Kosmim. We have to be Tamim Tiyei Mashem Elokecha. You have to be simple with HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Follow His ways. Don't try to guess the future. Look at the present. See what you need to do and advance with that. And Bilam, who isn't capable of doing that, who's constantly thinks he's a step ahead of everyone else and can't even see that the Malach right in front of his face like the donkey can, especially him is able when he's blessing Ami Israel to appreciate that capability. They don't have menachim, they don't have kosmim, they're tamim tiyeim Hashem elokecha. Very interesting because in other words what you're essentially saying is that Balak had a strategy, the same strategy that defeated him, he wanted to use now against Am Yisrael. That strategy, he takes the big strategist, he takes Bilam, the one that can see, can plan, can create an entire strategy in order to defeat Am Yisrael based on what he sees, based again on the stories that he can tell, on the fables that he can create and when we think about life many times we tend to also so build strategies, build plans, create things based on what we see with our own eyes. And sometimes things happen in the world that kind of shake us up and wake us up and open up our eyes just the same way Bilam's eyes were opened up to the donkey. That same donkey that treated him so 
well for so many years. And the donkey says to him, have I ever done anything like this to you? And Bilam says, no, just no. Like, of course not. The donkey says to him, okay, so then why? Don't you understand that there's something else over there? And so the same thing happens to us sometimes where we build and we create and yes, remember that God is in charge of everything and we know that everything is by God and because the Jeboku lets us have things. However, sometimes we plan and we strategize and we think that based on what we see, things will happen and things will end up happening. And again, maybe this is the message that this entire story of the donkey is here to tell us that even though you can see things, even though you can strategize and you can plan, still don't forget that everything is in the hands of God. Even if you think you can see everything, even if you think the strategy, and even if you remember that God is in charge, even then, still don't forget that God is in charge and things can change and things can happen. It's not only about what you want, there's other factors that you definitely don't know about that can happen and that can occur that will change your strategy, that will change your plans. You know, maybe what's so simple for a donkey, which is being simple, is for human beings really complicated. Simplicity can be very complex for humans, very simple for a donkey. And the more advanced human you are, the smarter you are, the more of a visionary you are, the harder it is sometimes to just be simple and see things simply. When you look at the end of the Parsha, that's maybe exactly the opposite of it is Pimphas. There's a special dream, a special rule of Kanaim Pok Imbo and Kanaos has to happen on the spot. You can't start negotiating in Allah in order to get to this ruling. Pinchas on the spot steps up, says to Moshe, didn't you teach her that? And Moshe says, yes, go. And he just goes and he does what he has to do without any strategy, without any planning, without any backwards and forwards in Allah, opening up Shulchan Aruch. Just gets up and does it because it's just that sin. Felt it, burning him in him, and he got up and he did it. The exact contrast from this entire story of Bilam and Balak and the strategy and the planning entire plan around it. Yeah, everybody must have been over strategizing and Pinchas knew what was right and was able to just act upon it. Exactly. Go ahead. Amazing. Thanks, Cece, for your time. See you next week. Great. Looking forward.